Archie. 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 Archie is an unaired television Archie. pilot produced in 1964. Archie. This pilot, which is based on the popular comic book series of the same name, would follow Archie and the rest of the gang from Riverdale as they go to great lengths to hold a school social at Riverdale High. John Simpson would star as the title character, Archie Andrews. Archibald Archie Andrews first appeared in Pep Comics 22 in 1941 and was created by MLJ Comics founder John Goldwater and writer-artist Bob Montana. Sometimes described as being the comic book equivalent to the Andy Hardy movie series or Henry Aldrich, Archie possessed a hapless teenage everyman type quality that would endear him to readers for years to come. The pilot opens with Archie having made this crazy Pee Wee Herman type device, or as I would later be informed, a Rube Goldberg type device that simulates him waking up for school in the morning. We then meet Archie's folks, Mr. and Mrs. Andrews, who are suspicious of their son's sudden enthusiasm to wake up and get ready for school. William Shallert would portray a less portly Mr. Andrews and Jean Vanderpile a more youthful Mrs. Andrews than you might be used to at this point. Fred and Mary Andrews would also first appear in Pep Comics 22 in 1941 alongside their son Archie. Mr. Andrews in this pilot is actually quite a brilliant psychologist and can quickly discern his son's many zany antics, which tend to remind one of the inventive and crazy schemes of characters like Zach Morris, Parker Lewis, or even Ferris Bueller. So even once Mr. Andrews has gotten Archie to the breakfast table, Archie is already making his case about how he needs more allowance this week to get a corsage for Betty for the upcoming school social. Archie's dad, of course, won't be giving his approval until Archie knows he's not getting trapped into taking Veronica as well. Pretty smart guy, that Mr. Andrews, huh? At that moment, Betty, played by Cheryl Holdridge, comes over to walk Archie to school. Betty Cooper, too, would make her first appearance in Pep Comics 22. At this point, we are first introduced to the principal of Riverdale High, Mr. Weatherby, portrayed by Roland Winters, who comes off as just a little crazy. I mean, I realize he's supposed to be talking to himself, but at many points it comes off more like he's hearing voices than actually just talking to himself. Waldo Weatherby would first appear in Jackpot Comics number 5 in March 1942. I guess I shouldn't judge the man too harshly, though. I mean, I suppose if you had a character like Archie for a student, you might be hearing voices, too. 99 of those students with about 25% of my time, while there's one student who takes 75% of my time. Now on campus, we're introduced to Archie's pal Jughead, played by Jerry Bright, and Veronica, played by Mickey Jameson. Jughead and Archie are talking up the wonders of the computer at Riverdale Bank, which is owned by Veronica's father. This, of course, is back in the 60s, mind you. No notebooks and pocket-sized PDAs here, people. Boy, these computers are wild. I also have to point out that Veronica has an extremely hot voice. Why don't you just drop them by the house this evening, Archie? Oh, sure. And that's the least I can do. Fourth Psy Pendleton Jones III, a.k.a. Jughead, would first appear in Pep Comics 22 in 1941, and Veronica, also known as Ronnie Lodge, would first appear in Pep Comics 26 in 1942. Upon arriving at class, we are introduced to the kids' teacher, Mrs. Grundy, portrayed by Mary Grace Canfield, was addressing her students, reminding them of the school social on Saturday night with a note from Mrs. Finch from the Parents Teacher Association. Miss Geraldine Grundy would first appear in Pep Comics 30 in 1942. As Miss Grundy leaves the classroom for a moment, we're introduced to Reggie, played by Wayne Adams, who takes the opportunity to ask Veronica to the school social. Reginald Mantle III, aka Reggie, would first appear in Jackpot Comics 5 in 1942. Of course, Veronica has already made up her mind that Archie's going to take her. Of course, this doesn't make Betty too happy as she says Archie's taking her. Pretty sure I wouldn't mind Archie's kind of problems with two beauties fighting over him and never being able to decide between the two of them. This kind of situation has even been christened by some to having a Betty-Veronica complex. We can see this romantic archetype has survived and made its way into other entertainment. I mean, for example, Peter Parker having to choose between Gwen Stacy or Mary Jane Watson, and Dawson Leary between Girl Next Door Joey Potter or blonde party girl Jen Lindley. Boy, I bet even Rock Hudson doesn't have your kind of trouble, hey Arch? Oh, you yeah, know, he does have a point. I mean, Archie never did quite settle on Betty or Veronica. Because he wanted them both at the same time, you assholes. He didn't choose one because he was trying to get them both into a three-way. You. Mom. Yeah, you. You are marching back across the street with me, and we're going to pick up a shitload of Archie folks. And I'm going to prove to you beyond the shadow of a doubt that Archie is all about pussy. Back to the class at Riverside High, Reggie spitballs his rival Archie, which makes him yelp, so Miss Grundy sends him to Principal Weatherby's office. Miss Kenny, Weatherby's secretary, is pretty hot, and Archie even flirts with her. 
You know, Miss Kenny, if your best girl is the one you spend the most time with, you and I are practically engaged. It turns out Mrs. Finch of the Parent-Teacher Association is currently in Weatherby's office, confronting him with concerns about the timid socialization at the school dance functions. Archie, not willing to pass up a golden opportunity like this, busts in to capitalize on Weatherby's predicament. But with a mind like yours, I don't have to tell you how a computer works. Archie is such a slickster in this pilot. I mean, it reminds me of Rob Lowe's character, Benjamin, talking to Noah Vanderhoff's wife in Wayne's World or something. Oh, the studio. That's where the magic happens. Oh, you've worked in television? No, but I watch a lot of it. Of course you do. You're creative. So Archie pitches his plan to use the Riverdale Bank's computer to pair up students at the school social, which is happily approved by Mrs. Finch. You're a nice boy. Hey. And basically, Archie is such a smooth customer, he isn't even questioned on why he was sent to the principal's office in the first place. What follows next is Betty and Veronica in cheerleader outfits while Archie is selling his version of eHarmony or Match.com to the other kids at Riverdale High. Obviously, it doesn't hurt that he's got two pretty girls right there next to him to sell the pitch to the other kids. Meanwhile, Mildred, a rather bashful girl, is so shy she runs away from all the hoopla Archie has started. And Archie, while he may be a slick character, underneath it all he still has a good heart and he starts to head after her. Unfortunately for Archie, Veronica throws the first monkey wrench into Archie's plans when she lets him know about... I think I should tell you now about using Daddy's computer. Well, what about it? You said you asked him and it's okay. And she says... Oh, I guess I fibbed a little. Oh, <laughs> what's a little? What? Oh, well, I, I know I was naughty. Yeah, I'll bet she is. So, Veronica blackmails Archie into taking her to the dance instead of Betty. Or else she won't ask her father for the use of the bank's computer for the whole matchmaking scheme. Eventually, Archie is forced to give in and tells Betty he's not taking her, and she smacks him a good one while Veronica is delightfully gleeful over Betty's misery. In the meantime, Reggie is trying to make the moves on Veronica and scheme her into taking him to the dance by suggesting that Archie doesn't intend to keep his word and will drop Veronica once she delivers the computer and still take Betty to the dance. Veronica ends up buying into Reggie's hype and smacks Archie, echoing Betty's smack, and Archie is left both dateless and computerless. While a timid Miss Grundy tries to ask Principal Weatherby to the school social, Archie and Jughead are concocting their own fake computer for the dance since Veronica is withholding access to the real one. Jughead is going to hide inside the pseudo-computer and match up all the cards entered into the fake device himself. Mr. Andrews even actually comments on the ethics of matchmaking with a fake computer, suggesting... After all, there's lots of illusion in romance. Again, this reminds me of something Zach Morris would have his buddy Screech do on Saved by the Bell. I mean, Jughead even partners himself up with the girl of his dreams, much like something Screech would try to do while he was gushing over Lisa Turtle. Hi, Lisa. Reggie figures out what Archie and Jughead are up to and tattles to Weatherby about the fake computer. You know, it almost sounds as though there's someone inside there. <laughs> now it looks like Weatherby has exposed Archie and intends to punish him for the fake machine. However, Archie's argument, based on the ethics echoed from his father earlier, seemed to convince Weatherby otherwise. At least, the man himself, if not his inner voice. Weatherby, go shut up. So, to sum up, Weatherby lets Archie off the hook and the school social is on. The episode ends as everyone is arriving to the social on Saturday night. Betty and Veronica are talking smack about Archie in front of their dates. Mr. Weatherby starts out escorting Miss Kenny, the hot secretary, remember? But he gets ripped away by Miss Grundy and Mrs. Finch. Meanwhile, Archie watches all this behind the scenes to notice the shy girl from before, Mildred, who is the only girl left without a partner. Archie, showing that heart of gold underneath, indicates that he and Mildred were partnered up all along and they happily go to the party together.